So in today's video, uh, we're not actually going to build anything. I just wanted to go over some sort of theory stuff. Uh, and the main topic will be on something called scope. So I've mentioned scope in previous videos. And essentially what scope is a way to refer to what's currently available for you to code against uh, whilst you're coding. So that's quite vague. So let's open up Visual Studio and we'll look at some examples of where you might have already run into scoping problems whilst you've been following along. So let's create a new project. We want a console app, .NET Framework, C Sharp. We'll this one scope. So one way that I remember being taught about scope when I first started programming was to think of these squiggly braces as like the scope on a sniper rifle. So <laughs> I know it's pretty lame sounding, but if you think about what's in scope is what's between these brackets, or if it was a rifle, what you can see through the scope. So scope has different layers. So what you'll actually see is we've got one layer of scope here, then another layer, and then another layer. So anything inside of the same layer of scope will be available and anything in the layer above will be available. So if we put a variable here, we'll call it one test, make a new string. So test is available within this scope, but it's also available within this scope and like less importantly within this one as well. So that makes a lot of sense and that's probably very similar to what you've been doing already. But if we were to make a function, so if we put in a static void test function, if we put our own, another function within this program, and we tried to reference that test variable, what you'll see is actually that the test variable doesn't exist within this scope. So it's in the parent scope, you'd be able to get at it from out here. But inside here, we, we've kind of entered a new scope, and it's not within the new scope that we've entered. But what we could do is declare a variable outside of our function in our program up here. So we could say string uh, number two equals two. I and mean, we'll have to make sure that it's a static string as well because our, oh, our function is also static. Um, and make sure we finish that line off. Now we can access number two within our scope here. And actually, I'll just assign it here to test. So we can assign it, we can read it. And even within our main function as well, we've got number two will pop up in the autocomplete. And that's because it's in the parent scope, the scope outside of our current scope. Um, so I hope you're following along. Uh, you, you may have bumped into trying, when you've done the exercises, when you were creating your own functions, you may have bumped into issues where you were trying to access variables that you defined in one function uh, from another function. And the reason you can't do that is because they're out of scope. Uh, as we move through the videos, I've got sections planned around making your own object. So this program class is a type of object and scope is also involved in the sort of object and class creation side of programming. But just for now, just try and remember that these are essentially sniper rifle scopes and you can access any variable inside your current scope or your parent scope or you know in cases it might even be your parents parent scope in the case of uh, for example like nested conditional logic which we've also looked at so just keep that in mind uh, and if you have any questions on that just hit me up in the comments below